Hello, I'm Doug and this is the Taste and Sensibility channel. And today on 10 Tastes for Whiskey Drinkers, we are looking at brandies and grappa. So brandy is a generic name for any kind of fruit wine that then gets distilled into a more concentrated distilled spirit, but it carries over many of the flavors and aromas from that fruit or from the fermented uh, remains of that fruit. So we have here today two kinds of apple brandy. The rest of the brandies are from grapes and they're from all over the world really, but mostly France. And the reason or objective behind all this is really twofold. Some malt whiskeys in Scotland have some apple and pear nuts. So you can pull these out of apple brandies pretty easily. And then the other thing might be some scotches might or other malt whiskeys might be finished in cognac barrels or other kinds of brandy barrels. So the flavors that those casks impart to the whiskey are of interest and the whole world of brandies, cognacs, armagnacs is just a subset of uh, pulling flavors out of distilled spirits. It's a high alcohol content. It's you have to get used to that that context before you can start understanding what you're tasting. So we're going to do ap apple first because it is the most uh, odd or unique. We'll do those first, and then we'll focus on the grape things. So if you like the reviews that you've been seeing here on this channel, please give this video a thumbs up. Please subscribe to the channel and click that bell to get notified every time a new video is released, which is usually on Mondays and Thursdays. And if you want to leave a comment or leave a question down below, that would be appreciated also. Let's interact some. So I've been amazed at how many different flavors I can pull out of different Scotch whiskeys, out of different American bourbons and American whiskeys. And this set of spirits is no exception. It follows right along. Here we have a apple brandy from a California distillery. So St. George Distillery is known for some other spirits that they do. I think they have uh, gins, vodkas, uh, they do a single malt whiskey. But one of the things is a, uh, an interesting apple brandy. And I saw this on a shelf in a local store here, so I pounced on it. Because a good craft made Apple brandy is not a real common thing. So I'm getting a, an alcoholic and a spirity aroma here, but I'm not sure the other notes I get are I would uh, assign to apples. It's fruity in a vague sort of way, but I would not necessarily say it's apple. Apple peel might be the closest I get but that's a pretty tenuous connection. So let's ignore the nose and go on to the taste. Apple is what I would say for sure. And it's fruity. It's bright, it's a mild flavor, it's an apple flavor, it's a fruity flavor. There's other things in there too that I don't know what to call. They're not part of my vocabulary of smelling and tasting. So what I've noticed in the past is that this is a modern craft distillery in California that just started up one or two decades ago and does not have a long tradition of how to do things. They have to discover things. They have to invent ways of doing things for the most part. And this other thing that we have here has centuries of tradition. And on the nose and taste, you compare the two and you go, yeah, this is way more complex. The, the experts are working on this one. So there's nothing wrong with this at all. It's wonderful, it's good, I'm looking for their malt whiskey and some of their other products. But this Calvados 
Cockerell, I think, is the name of the business establishment. Vintner Distiller. Calvados is the name of the apple brandy that's made in this one region of France. Same way you get to say Champagne if you're made in the Champagne region, well, you get to say Calvados. If you're actually located in the Calvados region of France, Oop, pour too much. Someone's gonna have to drink that. So they have uh, traditions and practices of making their apple ferment and making it kind of a wine and then make, and distilling that and then aging the product in barrels. So I'm about to compare the nose and palate of this one with all the tradition versus this one, which is a newer craft distillery in the U.S. in California. Oh wow, the nose just has so much more going on. I taste, I smell apples and oak and old things. I'm, I'm not sure what the things are, but there's multiple layers of aroma. And some of it's apple, some of it's apple peel. Seeds. Oh, there's so much going on just on the nose. I could smell this all day. So I didn't get much on the nose on this one. This one I'm getting 20, 10 or 20 things. I don't, most of them I can't name. It's apple-y, it's fruity, it's like a wine, but you go, ooh, there's no grape anything in there. There's wine characteristics that I can't describe very well, but certainly not grape, because it's all, it's made from apples. So Calvados is a wonderful thing that, uh, is produced in that part of France and sometimes they use the casks that held the Calvados for aging other spirits and it's good to know what flavors are imparted wow there are several layers of flavor here too There's a robust sweetness, there's an apple character in several different ways, but it's not the way I'm used to eating apples. It's like, it's a picture with parts of it missing. So I recognize this part and this part and this part, and if you filled in a few more spots, it would look like an apple or smell or taste like an apple, but the, some of those spots are just taken out. So I think the process of fermenting and distilling the apple wine that's made leaves out some of the things that we're used to when we just eat an apple, which is the most common thing we're used to. But apple pie or applesauce, it's not very processed. And we recognize all those things, but not all of them are there in this stuff. Some of them are there and you go, oh, that's apple. But the whole experience is not like an apple. Partly apple, partly wine, partly some kind of age or there's an age to it. Even though it's bright and fruity, there's an aged element to it that I just don't know what to call. So this is complicated on the nose and palate like this square so this is good it's pleasant i could sip on this all day long but this is really a treat for the nose and for the taste buds so there is something going on there in those uh, french provinces where they make one kind of thing just excellent 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 it's one of the other reasons for exploring apple brandies and distilled spirits made from apples is that so many Speyside Scotch whiskeys end up having apple and pear and this kind of fruit as one of the tasting notes. It comes up over and over and over again. So having a real apple spirit to familiarize yourself with the apple 
notes that are actually there in apples and apple distilled spirits is very handy. So, I don't know how many kinds of Calvados there are. 10, 100, 500, but find some. This is just good stuff. You learn a lot about apples and distilling in the French spirit making methods. Full identification and or links will be in the description for all these things. Okay, let's move on to grape things now. Okay, now we're moving back to California. This is our standard domestic grape brandy that we make. This is E and J, which means Ernest and Julio Gallo. XO is something, it means something in France when you're making brandies, when you're making cognacs. It means it's 10 years old, but in California, it doesn't mean anything. You can put it on the bottle for your fancy stuff or stuff you want to charge more for, but it doesn't mean anything. So this isn't 10 years old. This is great brandy, made in California. And I have found this very sweet, even syrupy sweet, compared to these other things, which are really complex and really nice. So this is a good thing to sip on. It's alcoholic. You can relax at the end of the day with this. But it is not the taste treat or nose treat that these things are. Made with much more tradition. This may have 50 years of tradition or 70 years of tradition in the California winemaking region. So I think it's probably just 40 ABV. Yep. The nose is not is not something that you go, oh, well, this was a wonderful fruity thing. Get a little alcohol, other solvency notes. I don't get any food or fruit. Okay, let's go palate. Oh wow, that's different. Sweet, syrupy, fruity in a m minimal way. It's almost mapley. Maple syrup is the biggest note. Maple. So I don't know where that comes from. There's nothing grapey about it that I can find. It's not grapey, it's not fruity, it's pleasant. So it's the minimum alcohol you need for brandy. And it's not fruity, but it's sweet. And the kind of sweet is maple syrup. And I've had, I've been through half of this bottle. It's been about the same way every time. So I'm sure there are fine American brandies. But this isn't it. But what is uh, established pretty well is French brandies from certain regions. And what we have here and <laughs> what we're moving into is cognac from a certain region in France. So they have their certain kinds of grapes that they like to use. So it's basically making a wine and then distilling that and then aging the distillate in oak casks for the right amount of time. So the wine they make probably, probably is not something you want to drink. They are not making it to drink the wine. They're making it to distill to their best cognac, to their best grape brandy. So I'm, I'm not even going to try to say this. Guillaume Paintra, Paintra. So nope, this is French. It will not work. I'm not going to say it, but it is. They, it's 40% ABV cognac from the cognac region of France. And here it is going into a brandy sifter. Oh, I poured way too much. But I went into uh, one of my local liquor stores, wine, wine specialist, and just said, hey, have you got some kind of cognac that's not the normal Remy Martin or, or one of the mega producers, one of the industrial type producers? And they recommended this stuff. So it 
says cognac grand grand champagne cognac fine champagne so i don't know the difference it might be a different kind of grade or level And there's certain rules about what they can do, adding color, how long it has to age, how long this thing happens, how long that thing happens. I don't know any of those things. And, you know, I'll be learning over the years to come. I've learned these are two really nice cognacs that are fairly different. And these are really two nice armagnacs that we'll get to in a minute. But look, how, look at the difference in color. And there's difference in taste. So this is fruity. This uh, strikes me as apple. There could be grapes in there. There's other fruits, but the, what they are is very ill defined. I can tell there's alcohol. It's a spirity thing and fruity. But the fruit is ill defined enough. I'm not going to be able to name something. I know it's grapes. Wow. That is easy to drink. That is pleasant on the palate. It's fruity, it's apple-y. I can't say grape is a big portion of it. Yep, there's a little bit of grapiness. It's something like this. It's like it's like 10% of this tastes like this. But the other 90% is just glorious. Fruity, bright. It's loud, but there's no sharp edges. Everything's nice and rounded and smoothed off and pleasant, friendly. Don't taste any appreciable oak notes that I recognize as oak. And I only know oak from drinking scotch whiskeys and bourbons, so I know New oak, I know ex bourbon casks, I know ex sherry casks. And a few others. And I don't really recognize any of that in this. I might be reusing the casks and they don't want to introduce new things or new flavors. They just want it to age for a while, soften up, round off. So this is wonderful. It doesn't strike you as youthful, but it doesn't strike you as old either. It has spent enough time in the cask. That's for sure. And I'm a, I don't know anything about the age rules. So that is good stuff. I like it. And this is Remy Martin, Cognac Fine Champagne VSOP. It's a very special old pail. I think it needs to be four years old. But I'm going to mess up lots of stuff on rules, on language, on pronunciation of French names. But this, of all the big mega manufacturers, this comes fairly highly recommended. It's quite a bit darker. I don't know if they can add color and if that's what the differences I think the sales person the clerk at the store that recommended this was saying that this is better this is more natural so yeah I'm thinking they get to do some stuff like that look look at the difference in color so let's see if it tastes or smells older it's not very pale to my eye again fruity more apple -y than grape 
Not a lot of other notes. No oakiness or age jumping out at me. So nothing wrong with the nose. I just don't get a lot off of my nose and I don't know what I'm smelling for in cognacs. Again, this is 40%. Oh, it's got a little punch of alcohol there. So it's a little spicier. That finish just is spicy, spicy, and goes on and on. It's longer than this is. I didn't get a spiciness with this on the finish. I know that European oak imparts a spiciness to many Scotch whiskeys. I'm getting that on the finish here. Now, let's go back up. <laughs> That's the obvious thing. Let's back up and go to the arrival and the development and all the earlier things. This is very fruity. But what the fruit is, I'm not going to just jump out and tell you. There's kind of a grapiness to it. There's a lot of apple notes. Fruity, light fruit, pear, kiwi, white grapes. Mostly light things. Oh man, that is nice. <laughs> that goes down real easy. So on repeated tastings, the 40% ABV is not that big a deal. Alcohol is not a major feature. And the fruitiness is, that's good. That's good, I like it. I can't name, I can't go through all the different notes and flavors. You've already heard them. It's nice, it's fruity, it's pleasant, it's great. The, these two are like 20 or 30% different. This is lighter, lighter fruits, lighter flavors, lighter notes. This is a little bit darker and that's what we see in the color, and I don't know if they add coloring or not, or if they're allowed to. So, these cognacs are wonderful, both. So I remember this being something on the order of $40. This is 43, 44, just a couple, a few days ago. I've tasted this five or six times since I bought it, and it's been wonderful and light and a good experience every time. So that's Cognac from that region of France. And now we're ready to move on to Armagnac. And I have two of them here. First one I'm going to do is Marie Dufault. I'm sure it's 40%. And it is the darker of the two that I have here. bought it probably because of stuff in the bottle or stuff in a little marketing triangle pyramid that was sitting on top of the bottle it said top 50 best buy spirits or you know winner of this award or that award or that competition The nose is a little different than either of these. I can tell a difference in Armagnac from Cognac, but I can't define it. I can't give notes. I can't give tastes and flavors. Something's different about Armagnac than the things I taste in Cognac. So I detect the difference, but I can't define it or describe it very well. This is not really my area. A very nice nose, light, fruity, complex.
the nose is hitting me with more things than I can handle or describe. And the same thing on the taste. It's a bit more of an alcohol bite in this one. I, these are all 40% ABV. Fruity. Apple. A little grapey. Uh, a medium spicy finish. Less spice than this thing had. And it's not quite as long as this thing was. But it's the same character. It just doesn't go on as long. Not as intense. So this Armagnac is certainly in this grape, brandy vibe. But it's different than these guys. Certainly different than this. Good, tasty, pleasant, friendly, different than these guys. There's a sweetness to it. There's a fruitiness to it. There's an alcohol kick. It's spirity, but not from like rubbing alcohol or acetone or anything like that. So I can see why this is popular if it really is the most popular. This is the thing that was on it. Top selling Armagnac in the USA, top 50 Best Buy Spirits. Notes of cocoa, orange rind, cake batter, and vanilla. Ooh, I didn't say all that, did I? I don't get cocoa. Orange rind, I can go along with. It's subtle. It's muted. Cake batter and vanilla. Hmm. There's vanilla from the oak, but, oh, yeah, I should have said that. Okay, so that is a good Armagnac. And then this one is Serbois, VSOP, 40% alcohol by volume. And there's all these signatures and symbols and certificates and all these things on here. I'm going to pour it and see how different it is from this one. Whoop, too much. I don't want to drink all that. Let's see what we have on the nose. A lot of overlap with this one, with the Marie Dufault. Say it's a good 60 70 percent overlap on the nose it smells very similar apple peel tiny bit grapey raisin spirity a little alcohol Not lots of fruit things on the nose for sure. Very mild and subdued on the nose. Wow. It is sweeter, but not in a fruity sort of way. I'm not sure I get grape or apple on the palate, but something is sweet. It's got to be some kind of fruitiness. And yeah, it is, but I don't know what it is. It's not apple, it's not grape. It's not part of my nose memory or, or tasting memory. It's almost, it's a little more syrupy. It's approaching this, but only minor part of the way. It's like 20 or 30 percent of the way to this. There's a syrupy sweetness to it, but it's a minor component and the fruitiness I can't identify. It's that 
really a melon. It's not the dark fruits or dried fruits. It's not red fruits. Apple peel and apple is the closest I can come to. It's not especially grapey. Well, if it's grape, it's like more pieces of that picture are missing. Yeah, here's a piece of grape here and there. But a lot, lot more holes. I get a bit of apple peel and apple on each one of them. These two, these two. Yeah, that one doesn't have much fruit. Definitely these two. Interesting. So it's totally made from grape ferment and grape ferment distillation. And I, the loudest note I get is apple-y. There you go. I don't have a very good taster or that's what's in there. It's an incomplete picture of a grape. Apple and apple peel are the only things I can identify. Is there oakiness? I don't get the spiciness I get on this guy that I attributed to European oak. So, I don't know what they're doing. It's pleasant, I could sip on this, this is great. And you can see I have sipped on it. This is an older bottle than this one, so those are going down at about the right level. This is a new bottle, this is older. <laughs> and you can see which one of these I prefer. So, brandy is an interesting category. And I'm sure and there's so much more to explore. So it gives you good tasting notes for whiskeys for various reasons. The space sides have some apple notes. Some scotches and other spirits are finished in cognac barrels. It's good to know what they taste like, but it's just good experience to go to a whole different spirit and figure out what you're tasting. So I get more apple than grape on so many of these. Maple here. And yeah, it's not changing. So that is good experience. So I hope that's a reasonable introduction to brandies, apple, or grape or otherwise and the special things of cognac and armagnac so now on to the grappas and grappa is a distilled spirit that's made from everything that's left over after they press all the juice out so wines are fermented juice with more or less skins contact but the grappa is like everything else, just skins, seeds, stems, stuff that's in there. Press out all the juice you can and all the solids left behind. That's what they ferment and distill. And it's got a lot in common with brandies, great brandies. But it's got a lot of overlap, but it's got a lot of stuff that's just not there in the wine that we're used to. So it's not there in the brandy that we're used to. So I started looking into grappa because of a set I got from my son and daughter-in-law who works at a wine, Italian wine distributor. And a couple of these bottles really caught my eye, caught my taste buds. I got snagged. And that's what made me start looking into grappa, figuring out what it is, how many kinds are there, where can I get more. And I bought this bottle of Bonfi, which is uh, 45%. From Bunfi Vintners. And this is really nice. I like the little cutout window here where you can see the estate mansion in the back. Pretty cool model. And I'm going to pour a little of this guy and taste. Oh, sink cork. So it's got a lot of. Uh, Overlaps got a lot in common with the brandies. There's a greenness. There's a vegetal note. There's a something extra that I don't get in the brandies usually. 
So there's more vegetal character to most of the grappas. And that makes them pretty interesting. So I don't get a lot of alcohol, but I get a few grapey nuts. There's something brandy-like about it. And then there's all the green stuff. Maybe brown stuff. There's a raisin note in there for sure. Oh wow, it tastes much greener. There's a raisiny thing that I don't usually get. And brandies. It's very strong here. And there's a green like leaves or stems or parts. So it's got a kind of a vegetable quality, kind of a bitterness. Not really a sweetness, but it's got grapey fruit notes, grapes and raisins are definitely on the palate. So it's a partial picture of a brandy. It's a partial picture of a ferment of all that pumice and all that stuff that wasn't juice. So that was very interesting. It gives you a different picture. It gives you some different flavors to pick out. These other grappas I got were from a little gift set, also for my son and daughter-in-law. And these are all from Poli, a distiller in Bassano, Italy. So this is their main 40% classic entry-level stuff, kind of pretty interesting. So I'll pour a little of that guy. Now here, this one's quite different. I don't get all the green stuff on the nose. It's not so vegetal, but what I am getting on those, I don't know what to call it. Fruity, muted fruit, subtle, nuanced fruit, almost fruit. Wow. There's a sweetness. It's kind of a melon fruitiness. Wow. There's a distinctive flavor there and I don't have a, a word for it. It's not like food or drink I've had before, so nothing to compare it to. Very interesting distilled spirit. So I like it. I just don't know what to call it or how to talk about it. And this one is called 24 Carat. I think it's aged a little bit. It may get, may pick up some oak notes or I don't know, get softened more. I don't know how they do all these things. So I need to read more about them. This one is definitely uh, colored, looks more aged, probably is more aged. Yeah, there's a dusty, musty oldness to it. It's definitely different than this guy. Oh wow. It's like this, but softened uh, with some vanilla. It's still that melon character. Sweet melon note, but it's not as strong, not as punchy. It's softened a little bit, so maybe it is aged and that had a little bit of an effect. So some grappas are aged, some aren't. Helps you learn to pick out some oak notes. So this was for my very first set that I got for Christmas one year. Ah, this is the Gewürztraminer, which got me interested in that grape, made me go out and buy the wine. And I can taste that grape all the way through everything. So even the distilled spirit tastes just like it. So 
of the grape variety is distinctive. I taste it in the wine. I taste it in the distilled spirit from the pumice. Wow, it smells like a Verstermeer. That is a strong aroma, strong nose. Maybe a little dustiness or age. I wouldn't think they could age these long enough to make them smell dusty. Oh, it's so fruity and complex. The Gewurztraminer grape is, I'm just fascinated by it. I don't know what it is. It's just a grape. You just turn into wine. But it's got so many facets. I like all the wines that, I had, that I've had in this bottle right here. Got me into it and really got my attention when I sampled all these three. So it's just very fruity. It's not sweet. It's fruity, fruity, fruity. An intense flavor. It's not very acidic. It's a punch of... I don't know what to call it. It's a punch of fruits, I have flavors I have not had before, except in this bottle. So that was wonderful, I still like it, and I'm gonna have to find where to buy big bottles of this stuff. So if you like the videos that you're seeing here on this channel, please give this video a thumbs up and like it. Please leave a comment down below, leave a question, and subscribe to the channel. And if you click that bell, you'll get notified when the new videos come out on Mondays and Thursdays. So that will do it for the Brandies and Grappa episode in 10 Tastes for Whiskey Drinkers.